regulation of organs and travels the mere matter of a few billions of miles over to the constellation of Leo the Light. As you see on the lights of the ceiling, this brilliant group of stars is more shaped like a city than a lion. That brilliant star at the end of the handle is Regulus. Toward the north, a few more billions of trillions of miles, we come to the constellation of Brutus, the Hoistman, shaped like a kite. At the end of the tail, you will see that famous star Arcturus, which was just as familiar to the ancient people as it is to us today. It's the handle of the Big Dipper, or more properly, Ursa Major, were extended a few billions of billions of miles. It would include Arcturus. Arcturus is sometimes called Choke Star because he is mentioned in the book of Job. During the summer months, Arcturus becomes one of the three brightest stars in the heavens. In this latitude, it begins to appear in March and reaches its highest point in June. And although we may say Arcturus is one of our nearest neighbors, it is interesting to know that its light, traveling at a tremendous speed, of 186,000 miles per second takes 40 years to reach our oil. What happened? What happened? Uh, Open that door. Hey, I'm not right. Yes, sir. Lock that door, Jim. Don't let anyone out. Lock that door. Open that door. Dr. Stone. And whoever shot him is still in this room with a gun. He's still in the room, but he wouldn't be so foolish as to have the gun. You see? Don't touch anything until the police get here. You're right, of course. It's evident this affair was very carefully planned, particularly against the same in place. I'll call the homicide department. Look here, Toby. You know everybody in this room, don't you? I believe so, Manning. Why? Why not let us go and give the police our names and address? That seems impossible. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. But under the circumstances, there's nothing left for me to do but to detain you until the police get here. Pardon me. It's all right. Now, oh, wait a minute, young lady. What's your rush? What do you care? You're not a speed cop. Say, are you the one that used that guy in there for a target? Oh, no. I'm the body. Now, wait a minute, sister. What's your name? Well, if I'm your sister, you ought to know. Come on, tell me. What's your name? Hey, Flatfoot. Who do you think you're talking to? That's exactly what I'm trying to find out. All right, all right. I'm Kay Palmer from the Post Chronicle, and I'm trying to phone my paper. Oh, and run on and phone your paper. But stick around. I want to talk to you later. You won't forget, will you? You bet I won't. You shouldn't. They say an elephant never forgets. Who's who around here? I'm Pearl Bridge, the astronomer in charge of the observatory. Oh, yes, I've heard of it. I'm Mallory of the Homicide Squad. This is Dr. Ross. Detective Regan. How do you do, gentlemen? Mr. Langsdale and Mr. Morgan of my staff. How do you do? Well, what's this? Who is it? Dr. Stone. All right, Doc. All right, boys. Regan, clear everybody out of here and we get through. Okay, Chief. Outside, everybody. Come on, come on, come on. Outside. This way out. Come on, move fast, Dr. Hey, Bill, see what you can find on that. 
say. What kind of a place is this? It's a planetarium, a kind of a magic lantern show. How does it work? Well, you see that uh, that doodad there throws light on the ceiling, which represents the stars. There's only three of these places in the United States, and about so oh, twenty of them in Europe. Gee, Mac, I can kiss you. You send me up to this forsaken hilltop, and what happens? A big, fat murder drops right in my lap. Murder? Who was it? Dr. Frederick Stone, the big anesthetic king. Stone dead? Yeah, Stone dead. <laughs> How do you think of him, Mac? Well, who's in charge? Lieutenant Mallory. Mallory? That dumb cluck. Hey, what do you mean he's a dumb cluck? He's swell. He's swell-headed. Well, all right, all right. Well, let's have it. Did you know Dr. Stone very well? Uh, just an acquaintance. Did he come here very often? No, he came occasionally for the lectures. Astronomy was just a hobby with him. Quite a crowd you had here tonight. Well, you see, these people were invited guests. It was a very special occasion, hearing a celebrity like uh, Professor Einfeld. Oh, yes. The newspapers made quite a fuss about him, haven't they? Well, naturally. Einfeld ranks as one of the three great scientists of the world. Trowbridge, are you positive no one could have made an escape after that shot was fired? Absolutely. I had my watchman, Jim Gray, lock that door immediately. Gray, tell me. Were you near enough the door to be sure that no one got out? Oh, yes, sir. I, I was sitting right beside it. It's a dreadful thing, isn't it, sir? Bad for the observatory, too. Yes, but we won't bother about that now. Been with you long? About ten years, ever since I took charge here. Oh, I'd like to have you meet Professor Einfeld. Professor, this is Mr. Mallory. How do you know, Professor? How did you do, sir? Professor, did you know Dr. Stone? No. I'm sorry. I did not know the children. Oh, they tell me that you're going to leave pretty soon to go back home. It is true. With a little luck of clear skies, I expect to finish my work this week. Professor, just exactly what are you working on? I'm completing my observations on the star Arcturus. Oh, yes, yes. I've heard of Arcturus. Yeah? There you are, Chief. Not a fingerprint and a car load. All right, thanks. I'll keep it. Okay. Oh, uh, Mr. Crowbridge, about Langfield. Uh, how long has he been with you? Uh, he uh, only came yesterday. But I've known him for years. I can vouch for him as well as I can for more. This is all yours, Mallory. He was shot through the heart. All right, Doc, thanks. Send in the stretcher, will you? Sure. I'll have my formal report for you at headquarters. Okay. Oh, oh no. No, you don't. Mallory's orders. He don't mean me. I'm a newspaper reporter. I couldn't let you in if you was a quintuplet. Well, is he finished in there yet? I don't know. Has he arrested anyone yet? I don't know. Well, if all the things you don't know were laid end to end, it would certainly make an awful mess, wouldn't it? I don't know. But I thought. <laughs> <laughs> all right, folks, let's do it, please. Uh, hey, you, come back here. Yeah, now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Regan, I thought I told you to keep everybody out of here. But I'm not everybody. Now, please, will you go outside? This is no place for you. My place is by your side. Your place is outside. Lieutenant, I'm asking you like a lady. Will you please see me and let me get back to my paper? After that elephant crack, I can't see you at all. Maybe I was wrong calling you an elephant. But after all, an elephant's a flat foot, too. You... Look out now. Anything you say will be used against you. What about what I think? Hmm, you can go as far as you like. Well, if what I think about you could be used against me, i get the chair. Stay out until I'm ready to question Regan, see that she stays here. Half whip. What? I called you a half whip, but I'm wrong. It'd take you and Mallory both to make one. Well, so I'm a half whip, am I? That promotes you. All right, boys, bring it out. Open up there, make room. Everyone, please, inside. Everyone but you. What do you mean, not me? You heard me. Sure, I did, Copper, and I'm asking you what it's all about. We'll discuss that later. In the meantime, you stick around and like it. I'm warning you, this is going to cost you a lot of sleepless afternoons. 
Ladies and gentlemen, I'm awfully sorry to cause all this inconvenience, but if you'll help me, I'll be as brief as possible. Will you all kindly take the seats you were occupying at the time the shot was fired? Thank you. As you all realize, ladies and gentlemen, one of you has committed a murder. Now, who or why, we haven't found out yet, but we hope to find very soon. Now, an examination of the wound, it would indicate that the shot came from that direction. That's right. It came from back here. It came from over my shoulder. Did you look around to see who did the shooting? Of course I did. But there wasn't anybody there then. Well, where did the person come from? I don't know. I didn't even know there was anybody there. Did anyone else hear or see anybody back there? Hmm. He must have moved into the position very quietly, fired, dropped down, and crawled away again. Does anyone recall a person moving from his seat just before the shot was fired? Yes, I do. You say someone moved from over here? Yes. Someone got up and moved from this seat a short time before the shot. That's right, Lieutenant, I remember. I see. Was it a man or was it a woman? A man. Yes, it was a man. Did you get a good look at him? No. He sat down after the lights were turned off. I see. What do you say? I couldn't see him either. Well, uh, wasn't there something distinctive about him? Uh, I mean, yes, there was. He had a beard. You're mistaken. He was smooth-faced. Oh, that's a great help. He must have had a beard on one side of his face and clean-shaven on the other. Yes, well, I'm sure I'm right. No, no, lady, you're wrong. Professor Reinfeldt, were you standing here when the shot was fired? Yeah, Lieutenant. I was standing right on this spot. Facing in that direction? Yeah. And you're sure you didn't see anyone move while you were speaking? Well, uh, I couldn't be too positive. You see, I may have been looking up. I see. Thank you. Morgan, you were operating the machine when Dr. Stone was killed? Yes, I was. Did anyone pass you moving across the floor? No, I'm sure they didn't. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Trowbridge, you told me that all these people were invited guests. Do you know everyone here? All except one person. Who is that? That gentleman. Do you have an invitation to come here tonight? Certainly. May I see it, please? I must have lost it. Oh, I see. Uh, what is your name? Pedro Hamad. Mr. Crowbridge, is that name on your list? No, sir, it is not. Did you know Dr. Stone? No, I didn't. Did you know Dr. Stone was coming here tonight? Since I didn't know him, why should I be interested? Answer my question. Did you know Dr. Stone was coming here tonight? No. That's a lie. You seem pretty positive. Who are you? Gorman. Clay Gorman. Did you know Dr. Stone? Naturally, I was his personal secretary. Hmm. What makes you say this man was lying? Because I heard Dr. Stone tell him he was coming here tonight. Oh, I see. They were friends. No. Enemies, would you say? Without a doubt. What makes you say that? Because I heard them quarreling violently. Quarreling? About what? Well, about money matters. Yesterday, Ahmed called up and demanded to see Dr. Stone tonight. I overheard it all on an extension phone. Mm, go on. The doctor told Ahmed he was coming here and refused to see him. Well, then... Then I heard Ahmed tell the doctor that he was going to kill him. So you came here tonight to kill Dr. Stone? Yes. And you killed him? No. Someone saved me the trouble. 
Reagan. Yes, Chief. We'll talk it over later. Tell the boys to see that this gentleman gets to jail safely. Right. I'll book him later. Step on it, buddy. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you may leave now. And thank you. Until we meet again. Uh, Mr. Trowbridge, I'd like to see you before I leave. Uh, very well, I'll be waiting in my office. Thank you. I go with you, yes. Oh, Gorman. Yes, sir. Are you interested in astronomy? No, not particularly. I, uh... Well, does attending lectures on stars uh, come under the heading of your job as secretary? No. No, oh, the doctors don't know you were coming? No. Well, why did you come? Well, uh, to try to protect Dr. Stone. Oh, I see. From our friend? Yes. A fine bodyguard you are, Gorman. Letting the murderer take your own gun right out of your pocket. Here. Be more careful the next time. That isn't my gun. Well, don't tell me you're playing bodyguard without a gun. No. I have a gun. And a permit to carry it? Hmm. All right, thank you, Gorman. Is that all? No. I don't want you to leave the city. Yes, sir. Well, well, well. Together again. Must be old homicide week. You had it coming to you, young lady. Now, what? wait a minute. Don't say anything you're going to regret. Hmm. Maybe you're right. Well, what about those questions you were going to ask me? Or can you remember them? Uh-huh. How old are you? Twenty-three. It's none of your business. Married? Certainly. For my job. Any children? Yes. Brain children. That's more than you can say. Seriously, now, what can you tell me about this murder? Read my newspaper in the morning. You can read, can't you? Any more questions? Yeah. What are you doing tomorrow night? Is that what you kept me here all this time to ask? That's all. Fine and diver against the police department. I always thought you got along with these newspaper reporters. Yeah, but this one's different. Well, if he's going to stay on this story, you better watch out for him. Look him, the age of the girl. So much the worse. Some of these women newspaper reporters are poison. Not this one. She's swell. Yeah, she must be, if, if you say so. Are you pretty sure the Hindu did it? No. What do you mean, no? Well, I don't think he did. Why, you've got him under arrest for murder. That's what the newspapers say. The guys look for illegal entry into the country. What about Gorman, Stone's secretary? Oh, his gun hadn't been fired, had it? Well, he might have had two of them. Well, who do you think did it? Well, if I knew that, the case would be closed. Now, listen, Mallory. This is one killing we've got to clean up quickly. Because it's going to be in the limelight from now on. Well, on account of uh, Einfeld and the unusual circumstance. The election's coming up. But... Oh, okay, D.A., I'm doing the best I can. Well, then you're doing something besides getting messed up with girl reporters. Well, I'm on my way to the observatory. Oh, uh, by the way, don't make a mistake and release that Hindu. But if he's not guilty, he's part of my plan. So long. Hello, Kenneth. Hello, Lang Zan. You seem pretty busy. Yes, I'm finding it necessary to brush up a bit for the new job. Ten or fifteen years away from it doesn't help any. Trowbridge tells me you've been in New York. What were you doing? I'm going to be perfectly frank with you, Lieutenant. I've been in prison. When I was released a week ago today. Hmm, what were you doing time for? 
Assault with intent to murder. Who did you try to kill? A man named Griffith. Tell me, is Langsdale your right name? My name is George Fremont. Why the alias? I served my full time. I've paid my so-called debt to society. And I want to make another start with a new name. Have you known Trowbridge very long? We were students together for Sorbonne in Paris. I see. I suppose you're an astronomer. Yes, among other things. A sort of scientific jack-of-all-trades. Well, thank you, Langdale. Anything new on the murder? Were you expecting something new? No. I just wondered if the Hindu had confessed. Not yet. By the way, don't take any long trips. Langsdale? Yes, and he told me something that you should have told me last night. Well, I thought it best for him to tell you. I hoped he would, and I'm very glad he did. Mm -hmm, perhaps you're right. Is Arnfeld around? Oh, yes. Uh, I'll tell him you want to see him. Oh, don't bother. That's well, well I, I must see him myself, Lieutenant, if you'll excuse me for a few moments. Sit down, Morgan. I want to talk to you. You had charge of mailing out those invitations, didn't you? Yes, sir. Did you send one to Dr. McDonald out of the university? Yes, I did. Seems strange that the Hindu got it instead, don't you think? Yes, it does. Morgan, you sent the Hindu that invitation, didn't you? Well, didn't you? Yes. Why didn't you tell me that last night? Well, I sold the invitation. I'm out paid me a hundred dollars for it. Now we're getting somewhere. Why did you sell it? I give you my word, Lieutenant. I didn't see any harm in doing it. And I needed that money. If Mr. Trovitz finds this out, he'll discharge me. Is that all? Yes. You believe me, don't you? Oh, yes, yes, of course. But I want to talk to you again, so stick around where I can get in touch with you. Come in, please. Good morning, Professor. Uh, good morning, Lieutenant. Please sit down, would you? Thank you. Well, Professor, how do you feel after last night's excitement? My, oh my, oh my. What a terrible thing. Never in my life have I been so close by a murder. I hardly expected to see you here so early this morning. Why not? Well, I thought last night's affair might have upset you, so you wouldn't want to go on with your work. No, no. If the better man is nice to me, maybe in two or three nights I finish up everything and start back home. Well, I'm sure everybody will be sorry to see you go. Oh, everybody has been just wonderful to me in this country. Almost sometimes I change my mind and stay here. <laughs> You'll be back. <laughs> oh, yeah, many times. <laughs> So you and Dr. Stone were pretty good friends, then? Right? No. I told you I did not know the man. Oh, yes. Yes, I remember now. Professor, you ought to have been able to see what was going on in that room last night, standing where you were. I did see something, maybe which I should have told you about. I saw... Come in. Yes, Jim? Here are the papers from Mr. Trowbridge you asked me to get, sir. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Professor, you were about to tell me what you saw last night. Oh, yes, yes. Lieutenant, I saw a gentleman kiss a lady when his mind should have been on Arturus. <laughs> <laughs> well, I won't keep you from your stars. I'll see you later. Thank you. I told you no.
Hey, you don't call this a story, do you? Honestly, Mac, I'll have something better later. You bet you will. Well, the DA won't talk, and neither will Mallory. He seems to be sore at me for some reason or other. And that was a bright, sun-drazzing Mallory. It's hard enough to get anything out of him anyway. You telling me? How about Regan? I'm on my way to see him now, and will I have something? You'd better. Well, goodbye now. Hello, Big Chief Wooden Foot. Is that Mug Mowry ready to see us now? He's out. Besides, he ain't seeing no newspaper guys. Says when he is, he'll send for you. Look, old shipmate, you and I have always been just like that. Tell us, what's the lowdown on the observatory killing? I don't know a thing. You're, You're telling, telling us. us. Come on, Jerry. Let's go dig up some real news. What's the measly murder? We'll go find a tree biting a dog. Brother, that would be news. Well, look who's here. Little girl who went to see the stars last night and stayed to make Scoopy. Well, that's what bad little reporters get for cutting lectures. Gee, you scared me. I thought it was a district attorney or something. After running around circles the way you do, it must feel great to have a good desk under your feet again. Yes, yes. Well, where is the gigantic intellect? Oh, be back in an hour. I suppose the Hindus confessed and the case is all solved. What do you think? I think they ought to take you and Mallory off the case and call in the Boy Scouts. Oh, yeah? Decidedly, yeah. You and Mallory couldn't find a bass drum in a telephone booth. Listen, sister. What if I was to tell you that this case is in the bag, all tied up? Well, I'd say that you were taken improper liberties with the truth. That's what you think. Regan, you're kidding. You don't mean this case is solved. You wait about 24 hours. You mean you'll actually know in 24 hours who the murderer was? Easy. Maybe less. Regan, you don't mean to say someone's going to confess. No, but... Uh... Oh, I know. Someone saw the murder and is going to tell you who did it. Hey, wait a minute. You... I've got it. Einfeld. I never said it was Einfeld. I didn't say you did, but it was Einfeld, wasn't it? And the Hindu is innocent. Well, maybe... I could... knew it. He is innocent. And Einfeld's going to tell you who the murderer was. Gosh, you should be a detective. So should you. And how is Einfeld going to be able to tell you? Wait a minute. Don't tell me. I know. He'll go into a trance. That's it. A trance. And he'll turn his wonderful mind back to that fatal hour. Hey, wait a minute. Don't interrupt me when you're telling me a story like this, Regan. I know. Then he'll see the murderer in a vision. That's it. A vision. And he'll tell you who the murderer was. Is that right? Sister, you took the words right out of my mouth. Regan, you're a wonder. I take back everything I said about you and Mallory. You're smart. But both of you. Hey, wait a minute. You... Well, she could be right. interview yesterday with a post pilot reporter, a prominent member of the detective bureau revealed that Professor Ernst Einfeld has promised to go into a trance and name the person who committed the star murder. Isn't that mom? So now we solve our crimes by making the people see the criminals in dreams. I tell you, D.A., that story did not come from our department. I don't know any more about it than you do. Then it was that Palmer girl. I'll have her fired. I'll run her out of town. I'll have arrested for everything from porch climbing to, to horse feeding. Oh, she's all right, D.A. She must have had something to base her story on. Ah. Oh. So you did shoot your mouth off to her after all, eh? Yeah, but how was I to know that dumb dame believed what I said? I, I was just kidding her. Well, I'm not kidding. It's going to cost you a six month layoff, Regan, unless Mallory finishes his case by the end of the week. Call up that farmer, Dame, and see what she really knows. She doesn't know a thing. But maybe Einfeld does. Come on, Stoop.
I gave you a chance to tell me everything you knew. You should have told me instead of holding back information. I know absolutely nothing, Lieutenant. Why, this story is ridiculous. I can't go into a trance. Yet you hinted at the Palmer girl that you knew who the murderer is. Certainly not. You numb brain. Professor, you're on a spot. And you'd better tell me everything you really know about that murder. I know nothing, I tell you. But the man who killed Stone may think you do and try and kill you. No, no. No, Lieutenant. You mustn't think such things. Understand, Professor, I'm not ordering you to stay here in your room, but I'm advising you to do so. Hello? Yes? What's the matter? You're right. Somebody said he was going to kill me. Hello? Hello, this is the police. Try and place that call. Did you recognize the voice? No, I didn't. It, the voice seemed d d disguised. Oh. All right. Thank you. Too late. You shouldn't have hung up. I will have to keep you guarded day and night from now on. Why, why should somebody try to kill me? I know nothing about a murder. But whoever threatened you thinks you do, and it's all the same. But my work. I must finish it. Were you going to the observatory tonight? Yeah. Then by all means go. Whoever wants to kill you will probably be there. Then why should I go? I'll have my men all over the place. And we might be able to nab him. All right. Come in. Mr. Gorman to see you, Mr. Cobridge. Oh, hello, Gorman. I'm returning one of your books, Dr. Stonehard. Well, it's really uh, Dr. Einfeld. Uh, uh, see that he gets that, will you, please? Yes, sir. Trowbridge speaking. Oh, yes, Lieutenant. Dr. Einfeld. Good heavens. I was afraid of that. He's coming down anyway? I see. Yes. Of course. I'll attend to it. Someone has threatened to kill Einfeld. Mallory's bringing him here tonight under guard. Under guard? Yes. You get Langsdale and Jim. You're not to leave this room today. Regan, you stay here until the boys from headquarters show up. Right. And no one is to see him. Under any circumstances, that goes double for newspaper reporters. I'll be back here tonight to take you to the observatory myself. Lieutenant, I'm sorry to cause you all this trouble. But I know nothing about this murder. You believe me, don't you? Oh, yes, sure I believe it. Help yourself. Come in. You sent for us, Mr. Trubbage? Yes. Jim, I want you to clear this place of visitors by five o'clock. Is something wrong, sir? Very much so. Dr. Einfeld's life has been threatened. Lieutenant Mallory thinks he can make an arrest here tonight. Will the professor be here as usual? Yes, with police protection. Mallory will have his men inside and out. Is there anything else you want me to do, sir? Yes. I want you to search this building from top to bottom. Make sure that nobody is around except those who have business here. Right away, sir. Langsdale, will you please see that Dr. Reinfeld's papers are taken from his office and put in the observatory? I'll attend to it. Stop in Mr. Trowbridge's office, Lieutenant. Hello, Jim. Well, how do you do, Lieutenant Mallory? I'm, I'm just 
straightening up Professor's room a little. Yeah, so I see. Yes, he, he likes to have everything just so, sir. By the way, you never did tell me why you tried to kill that man Griffith. You never asked me. Well, what was the trouble? Griffith and I worked in the same laboratory. I invented a valuable chemical formula. He stole it and managed to patent it himself. When I found it out, well... What happened to Griffith? I don't know. He dropped out of sight completely. So, you know, I'm interested in astronomy. I wish I knew more about it. Why don't you drop up and talk with us whenever you get an opportunity? We'd be glad to have you. I'd like to. It's an ancient science, isn't it? Very. The movements of the stars were well known even before telescopes were invented. That's amazing. Now, this star at Taurus that the professor is working on, they tell me it's called Job's star. Yes. That's because it's mentioned in the book of Job. I'd like to read up on that star. You haven't got something you can lend me, have you? Sorry, I did have, but I must have blown it to someone. Oh, well. Funny time, let me have it Uh, by the way, he'll be here tonight, won't he? Yes, of course. Nice of you to call. Of all fantastic, silly newspaper lies I've ever read, your story is a payoff. Keep your badge on, Homicide. That story came from the police department. Don't forget that. Well, you had no business to use it. I had a perfect right. Of course, I admit I suggested most of the ideas. But Regan yesed me on every one of them. And he didn't say not to quote it. Well, Regan was just stringing you. <laughs> Imagine Regan stringing anybody. I said I'd get even with you, and I've done it. You've done more than you realize. Meaning what? Miss Palmer, I don't care a steam-heated hoot what you say about me. I can take it. But when you wrote that ridiculous story, did you stop to think that the person who killed Dr. Stone would read it? And not knowing it was the result of your genius for invention, might take it seriously and try to put Einfeld out of the way to shut him up? Did you stop to think you put that old man's life in danger? Think it over. Yes, sir, All right, keep your eyes open. You know the audit. Yes, sir. Come in. Hello, Professor. You should be able to finish your last night without interruption. My last night? <laughs> Heaven forbid. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it that way. No, you have nothing to worry about tonight. Everything's ready and waiting, Professor. Thank you. Oh, oh uh, may I use your phone, Mr. Oh, oh, certainly. Help yourself. I know. By the way, do you happen to know the Plaza Hotel number? Oh, yes. It's uh, right there. Uh, Ridgeview, 
Yes, I'm Kay Palmer from the Post Chronicle, and I'm looking for Professor Einfeld. Wait here, and I'll find out if he wants to see you. Thanks. Uh, that's right. Relay all Professor Einfeld's calls to me here at the observatory. That's right. Thank you. Regan, there's a girl here named Palmer from the Post Chronicle. She wants to see Einfeld. Wait a minute. See, she's here again. Let her in, but keep her in. Got you, Chief. Huh? I'd better start to work. But I have to start at my office first and get my papers. You won't need to. I had them all taken from your desk and put in the telescope room. Thank you, Mr. Trowbridge. You are so thoughtful. I'd like to take a look at that room before you go in. Oh, Lieutenant, do you really think there is so much danger? Why do you think I have all these men around here? I'll worry about that, not you. So? Good luck, Professor. I hope everything will be all right. I hope so, too. Thank you. Dr. Einfeld, I came up here tonight to tell you how sorry I am. It's quite all right, Miss Palmer. Please believe me. I wouldn't have called you all this trouble for anything if I'd stopped to think. Don't start thinking, Miss Palmer. You might strain yourself. Okay, Clefford. I'll take it now, but I'll send it to you later. All right, Clefford. We're still friends, aren't we? Why, of course. Thank you. Good night, Miss Palmer. Good night. <laughs> oh, Mr. Regan. No, I don't know a thing. Mm -hmm. Well, view of the city lights from up here, Ed. Yeah, I've never been up here before. Big place, isn't it? Sure is. Takes a lot of guarding. Mallory must have a dozen of us up here. Inside and out. The mosquito couldn't get to that old guy tonight. I'll say it couldn't. You wait here a minute, Professor. I want to take a look around for you. Take a look around and see that everything's working all right.
place is guarded inside and out, Professor, so you'll be perfectly safe. Thank you. You sure you're not afraid? No. <laughs> and if you are, you can use my gun. Oh, no, thank you. I have a gun of my own right here in this door. Isn't that strange? It's gone. When did you use it, lad? To tell you the truth, Lieutenant, I have never used it. Hmm. Nice night to work, isn't it? Oh, yeah. The night is ideal. So clear. And the atmosphere so still. Arcturus is very bright tonight. Arcturus is the star they used to open a century of progress in Chicago, isn't it? Yes, that's right. Now, what star is Arcturus? Oh, that's right, fellow dear. At 908 exactly, he will be in the best position for me to do my work. Professor, how can you tell the time so well? Oh, the stars move on definite time schedules. Just exactly like trains or the ocean tides. Hmm. There must be some book on the time of the stars, isn't there? Oh, yes. Good many. Yeah. I wonder if you have one that I could read. Oh, yes. I've got one right here among my papers. I let you take this along. Well, I can't understand it. The page is torn out. Hmm. You have no idea who did it? None whatever. Professor, I wonder if I could look at that star before you started work. Oh, no, no. That's impossible, Lieutenant. You see, the telescope is already adjusted to pick up Arcturus when he comes within the range exactly at 9.08. Oh, yes, I see. Well, some other time. Sir, about uh, Professor Einfeld. I guess we all are. Maybe I I should have gone to Lieutenant Mallory about this, but go on. It's about the murder of Doctor Stone, sir. While straightening up the professor's desk this morning, I I found something that convinced me. The professor did know Dr. Stone. What do they mean? I can't get out of here? My order. You haven't changed much since I first met you. Just a little grayer around the temples and a little thicker in the skull. Clark, the reporter. What's happened, Lieutenant? Well, I won't know until I get inside. Have you got a key? Yes. All right, never mind, man. Here, that one. Murdered in spite of everything. I think you're wrong, Lieutenant. It looks like suicide. Hmm, one shell fired. Morgan, did you know if Einfeld had a gun? Yes, he did. I see. Hello. Oh, yes, D.A. Jim Gray is here. He says he has some very important information about the stone murder and Professor Einfeld. Einfeld? Einfeld's dead. 
Ten. We'll be over immediately. I'm sorry, folks, but you all have to leave until we finish you here. I'll send for you. Regan, have all the exits watched. Nobody is to leave this building. And get that medical examiner up here as fast as he can get. Right. Miss Palmer. You stay here, please. Oh, thank you. Don't get me wrong. I'm not doing you any favors. Lieutenant, it's no use to tell you I'm sorry. I'm heartbroken about this. Now, perhaps you can understand why I don't give information to the papers. And you can get an idea how much help the newspapers are to a detective. I suppose you're going to dash out now and phone in another murder, eh? Well, I've got to. Dr. Einfeld's been murdered, hasn't he? No. Suicide? No. Nope. Well, if he hasn't committed suicide, he certainly must have been murdered. Fortunately, I've been able to prevent that. All right, Professor Einfeld. Oh, no, Miss Palmer. I'm not a ghost. Old Professor Einfeld just what you would call play possum. Oh, I've never been so glad of anything in all my life. Neither have I. <laughs> I'm sorry for the shock you had, Miss Palmer, but I wanted you to fully realize the results we might have had from such a crazy newspaper story. Okay, homicide. I had it coming. Well, we have a big job ahead of us. We have to find out who intended to do this murder and how he intended to do it. Uh, Dr. Einfeld, where were you standing when the shot was fired? I was standing over there by the wall, just as you told me. I see. Did you see the flash from the gun? No. I was looking at the clock when I heard the sound. Hmm. What time was that? Exactly eight minutes past nine. I see. Now, if you were working as you intended, where would you have been at the time of the shot? I would have been sitting at the end of this platform, looking into my telescope. And the gun was found here. No doubt you were supposed to be found dead, and it was to look like suicide. Yes, but don't forget the powder burn. Yes. That means the bullet had to come from a very close range. Hello. Photoelectric cells, huh? Is that part of the equipment, Doctor? Yes, in a way. We use them sometimes photographing the stars and nebula. All right. Yes. Professor, can you reset the telescope to pick up Arcturus and say, uh, oh, about 
15 minutes. Certainly. Like to stand in that spot. <laughs> yes? What's up with Medical examiner? Well, bring him up, will you? Thanks. The health and medical examiner going to take us when he finds out his case has come to life. I'm afraid he'll be sadly disappointed. <laughs> I had. <laughs> well, you better get under cover again, Professor. They'll be up here any moment. I hope I don't catch cold lying dead here on the floor. If you do, come down to the morgue and I'll give you something to fix you up. The morgue? Oh. Held you up, do you, eh? I, uh, I was arrested for speeding. I wouldn't mention that in your paper if I were you, Miss Palmer. Oh, no. All through, Doc? Yes. Just waiting for the ambulance. Is that where the body was found? Yeah. And his gun here, right beside him. Was it suicide? Well, that's what the doc says. <clears throat> Gentlemen, I'm Miss Palmer. I gathered you here to tell you that the case is closed and to apologize for any inconvenience that I might have caused you. 
For what reasons, we do not know as yet. It is apparent that poor old Professor Einfeld shot and killed Dr. Stone. Then tortured by his own conscience and unable to face it, he committed suicide. Here in his room, where nobody could reach him, the old man saw fit to make his tragic atonement. Trowbridge. You were worried about your friend, weren't you? Yes, I was. You were afraid he knew something he hadn't told? Not at all. When I read that absurd article in the paper, I was afraid the murderer might believe it and make an attempt on Einfeld's life. Naturally. I have an apology to make to you, Trowbridge. I confess that for a while I was very suspicious of you. Why? When I saw your telephone book conveniently open to Dr. Einfeld's hotel number... I thought it possible that you had phoned the death threat. Well, I did try to call the professor today. After reading that article, I wanted to warn him to be careful. But the line was busy. Then Gorman came in to return a book. And immediately after, you phoned me. Mm -hmm. Of course, the professor faked that death threat for my benefit. Then, too, you took such care to let everyone know that the professor was going to be here tonight. Oh, really? I right. just wanted you to know my reason. You will accept my apology? Sir. Thank you. Oh, uh, Gorman. Yes, sir? I thought I had a good reason to suspect you. Oh, that's all right, Mallory. But anyone who returns a book must be honest. Oh, wasn't it a very good book? I don't really know. It was a book on stars that Dr. Stone had borrowed. Oh, I see. This one, perhaps? Yes, that's it. You weren't very careful with it, were you? I didn't read it. Oh, of course. Frankly, Gorman... When I found a shortage in your accounts of some $50,000, I thought you had a very good reason for killing Dr. Stone. It's our business to suspect everyone, of course. However, grand larceny is not murder, so we'll leave that to the Stone estate. I don't wonder you are leaving town. Regan! Take care of this gentleman, will you? All right. Even you came in for your share, Morgan. Until the doctor convinced me that it was suicide, I was very suspicious of you. You seemed to detect that gun very quickly. Well, it was obvious. Hmm. You knew Einfeld had a gun, and you had such easy access to this room. Yes, but why? Well, I wasn't sure. It was just a moment's thought. That probably you could have planted the gun very easily. You see, just being a passing thought, why, I don't owe you as much as an apology as I do Langsdale. Oh, uh... Langsdale, I must admit that you came in for most of the consideration. Why? Because you tried to kill Dr. Stone once before. I? Why, I didn't even know the man. You seemed to know him pretty well before he made his first million and changed his name from Griffith. Oh. He was Griffith. I remember now. I didn't see him until after he was dead. But there was something familiar about him. Something I couldn't quite place. Now you can understand why I suspected you. Well, I won't keep you all here indefinitely. Oh, Jim. Uh, what was the news you had? Why, it's too late now, sir. You found out that Professor Reinfeld killed Dr. Stone. How did you know that? By this, sir. Professor Reinfeld said he didn't know Dr. Stone... I found this in his desk. To my good friend, Professor Einfeld, Frederick Stone. Well, this would cinch it, except... Except what, sir? Except that it's a forgery. Really, sir? There's a few things, Jim, that you seem to have overlooked. The first is that the night Dr. Stone was shot, Professor Einfeld wasn't the only person in the room that could move around without being noticed. The other person was you. The second thing is that if you had fired the shot at Dr. Stone, Professor Einfeld might have seen you. You believed he did, didn't you, Jim? But I, I didn't fire any shot, sir. Then when the newspaper article came out, you believed Professor Einfeld might remember having seen you. That worried you, didn't it, Jim? I don't know what you're talking about. You knew the professor was coming here tonight. You knew where he kept his gun. And how to plant it for a suicide theory. I didn't. 
I didn't know anything about it. As a matter of fact, exactly what time the professor would die. You knew it so well that you were with the district attorney at the moment. A perfect alibi. I didn't. I didn't, I tell you. And you knew enough not to show this trumped-up photograph until you had the district attorney himself assure you that your plan had been successful. It's a lie. It's all lies, I tell you. That was very clever, Jim. Almost genius. And everything would have been all right. Except Professor Einfeldt did not commit suicide as you planned. It's all lies. You can't prove any of it. All right, Professor Einfeldt. Come here, please. Einfeldt. No, no. No, you didn't do it. I tell them you didn't. You didn't kill Dr. Stone. No, no, no. I, I, I didn't know what I was saying. I, I thought you knew it was... Me. Put up your hands. I'll shoot you. Nobody's going to arrest me for killing that murderer. He was a murderer, that doctor. He killed my boy. I put that thing on the telescope. I found out about the staff in that book. I tore out the page. I'm glad I did it. I'm glad I said Jim, get away from there. I'm the one who gives orders now. I've got the gun. Get away, I say. The telescope gun is loaded. Jim! That's me. Tell the professor to forgive me. Jim, why did you kill Dr. Stone? He killed my boy. I found out it wasn't the operation. It was the... Anesthetic. He made it. Stone made it. He... He was responsible. He took... The only thing I... I ever loved. My boy. The... Palmer, if you phone your paper, wait in the planetarium room. What is it? Lieutenant, isn't there something that I could do to show my gratitude? Yes, there is. I'd like to know more about astronomy. So? Consequently, it is known both as the morning and the evening star. The ancients called it Hesperus, when an evening star, and Phosphorus, when a morning star. It is said that in the early history of our race, Hesperus and Phosphorus were not known to be the same body. Venus had its greatest brightness about halfway between the million of countries and greater elongation. It then has about two hours after the sun. And right about two hours before on its left. Venus, the brightest star in the heavens, is only outshone by the sun and the moon. When it rises in the east of the sun, it may be seen in the west. And when it's seen in the west, it rises before sunrise and may be seen. 